Hello, Celeste. Thank you for joining me tonight and talking to us about your experience with Hurricanes ETA and IOTA and volunteer tourism. Hi, thank you for having me, Anna. So my first question is, can you provide a little bit of background about your experience with Hurricanes ETA and IOTA? Okay, so I guess we would have to start from the very beginning, right, with ETA, which was around this time of the year a year ago. Um, I remember that my house is a one-story house, and my mom had already heard that there is probably going to come a hurricane and we're, go we're going to get flooded. So we moved to my grandmother's house, which is right beside my house, which is a two-story house. And then once the water was starting to like roll in, we could see how it would gradually increase and increase and increase. I remember, the, I think it was a Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, it got all the way like high, like almost completely covering all of the wall of my house, which if I were to be standing there, it would completely cover me. Um, I remember during it, uh, one of my neighbors, I remember hearing my neighbor screaming towards my other neighbors, which were like a bit behind telling them oh come over here come over here we can help you because they had a little child children and they didn't have anywhere to go their house was completely flooded so they were like oh you can come over here and stay with us during this time it was a lot you know because there was a lot of like water and there was definitely lots of people uh, later on we saw like on on our phones that most people had to climb onto their roofs because they had absolutely nowhere to go. Most of most of the houses in this town, because it's a it's a low resources town, honestly, uh, they're made of, of laminas or very like uh, a weak material. Their walls are made of very weak material that with the water rushing in right from the river, they completely take them away. So what some people were doing is that they were getting on little boats, lanchas, what they call them. But of course, they couldn't get to anyone. So what most people tried to do was get on top of the roof. And there were thousands of people like on the roof. Like you could, there was a helicopter, I believe, filming. And there's a video of people like literally standing on the room, roof asking for help. Okay. And then uh, for the second one, right, Iota, because there were two, one right after the other about a week if I'm not mistaken, uh, for that one, my mother made the decision of leaving the town, right? And it's a, like a tiny little town and then it's the big city, right? And it's a transit of about an hour. But during this time, everyone that didn't have a house, right? Came all, walked all the way to like the, the highway-ish, mm -hmm. not really a highway, but like kind of like the yeah. highway, which was higher than the river level. So the water wouldn't pass through there. What they did is that they took a whole lane, like all the way, the whole lane from the town to, to like almost the initial part of the city was filled and filled with people from all ages, from like little newborn babies, literally, to very old people living in, in tents, but not really tents because they were pieces of wood made with like trash bags or anything that they could find, anything that they could salvage from their house, like well, not really, they couldn't really salvage anything, just a pair of clothing and stuff. So while we were like headed out, there were thousands of people there. And I mean, like a lot of people there. Okay. My second question is, can you talk a little bit more about your experience with volunteer tourism? Because I know that a lot of foreign volunteers came to Honduras to offer their help after the hurricane struck Honduras. Definitely, definitely. Yes, there were a few. I remember when we were on our way out, right? Also when we were came back, but mostly, no, when we came back, sorry, yeah, when we came back after the two hurricanes, uh, it was a while after the two had stopped, right? Because we had to wait for the water to like completely go away. When we came back and going through that same lane that there was still thousands of people there, right? But now they weren't only on tents of like, wood and trash bags but they had tents from like actual tents like actual hard tents well mm -hmm. uh that they were sent from japan because i remember seeing the flag of japan in those tents and there were thousands there were thousands of tents all the way from from the city but until like halfway and then from the halfway 
to like the town, there were tents from, I believe it was the US if I'm not mistaken. They also sent tents, which was very, very helpful because the people were living in the streets. They literally had nothing. There was also this time that when we were headed back, there was um, a pickup truck, I believe it's called, with food. What they were doing is that I believe a United States organization was giving them food out like they would make there was this huge line for the people to like get food there which was very very good because the people needed that they didn't have anything okay so my next question is what will you say are the pros or the benefits of volunteer tourism well i definitely think there's lots of pros for example uh, all of the volunteers definitely have very good intentions like they go there on their own free will to help people um definitely like i mentioned before all the like giving of food and the giving of tents was incredibly helpful but af even after like at that end a few weeks after actually when the water had completely gone out and everything they stayed and they helped clean out like the mud because it was basically like like this of mud was on my house afterwards and even the other houses they helped clean it and then some even helped reconstruct those houses which is well they definitely tried to help right they were doing their best and what they believed was their best also i remember when we were driving through there were a few of uh, Americans, right, that were interacting with the Hondurans, right, trying to talk to them and being like genuinely concerned about them and about their well being and about their children, because lots of people had children there. So lots of Americans were like, oh, we can, we can donate these clothes to you to your children so that they're okay so that they have something for the winter that's coming because we were in November. Until well, it was rain, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. My next question is, what would you say are the cons or like the downsides of volunteer tourism? Okay, um, unfortunately, I do think that there are quite a few uh, downsides to volunteer tourism. Uh, most importantly, the language barrier. Uh, a lot of the volunteers, you could see that there was a lot of confusion between the Honduran and the American, of course, or any others that came because they simply didn't speak Spanish, so they couldn't communicate uh, what they were trying to say. Yes, they were trying to help, but it was it made it a lot harder, you know? Also, um, certain of the houses that I previously had mentioned that they tried to like, make and remake, um, unfortunately, they didn't really know how to, mostly because the material uh, laminas, as I had previously said, they don't use that in the States or in any other place to actually like make a house because it's, it's such a weak material as per se, but this is the only thing that they can afford, right? This is the only thing that they can rebuild their house with. So when the Americans or the volunteer tourism try to remake them, they wouldn't be like properly structured, I guess you can say. So long-term, those houses wouldn't really work for them they weren't really like sustain enough of enough of the rains because like as i mentioned we were in november december and during these two months there's lots and lots of rain so many houses were like the ones that they had rebuilt right the roofs started to like leak and stuff which is a problem of course many like for example the food and everything that they gave was a short term, I mean, after a month, I believe, there was no longer like trucks of food being delivered to the people, even though there were still some people in the street living, I remember. But there were simply, they, they didn't continue, right? It was a short term arrangement, a short term help. Um, what else? Let me think. Um, I also saw a few videos of people and it kind of seemed like they were just trying to help because of the videos. They were like, oh, look at me, I'm out here helping them instead of just like helping them, you know? So they were like taking pictures with like little kids and the kids were just like, just give me my, just give me my clothes, please. <laughs> but yeah, definitely that. 
it seems. Okay, so my last question is, do you believe that overall volunteer tourism is more beneficial or harmful? Well, overall, uh, personally, I do believe that volunteer tourism is beneficial because there's lots of things that are helpful. But I can definitely see where some people might argue that it's um, that it's harmful. Harmful. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> it's harmful. I forgot the word. Um, I could see why it's beneficial because the people are definitely trying to help. There is that good in their hearts that come all the way from any part of the world really trying to help because it was a disaster here. I mean, personally, what I experienced was very hard and not to mention with other people that had to go and live in the streets was very hard for them. So even, even with just a t-shirt that you gave them, that was a huge change of their life. It meant that they had something to wear tomorrow, which was definitely very important and food they had to get the food somewhere and they these people weren't working and because of covid uh, they didn't have masks on so the whole virus was going on and some of the people uh the volunteering gave away gave gave around masks right unfortunately there are some cons to it right of course the language barrier is a big thing of people trying to the spanish speaking people as right uh, trying to speak in English to the to the Americans or whoever trying to tell them like oh can I have some more food or oh can I have a teacher like or can I have a tent my family doesn't have a tent them trying to say that to them and the Americans simply not understanding because it's it's a language barrier right also definitely the houses and the structure of them not knowing how to build definitely affected them on the long term, of course, like even in January, there were people that still struggled that didn't have anywhere to live. So they were very short term volunteer tourism, I guess you can say. And also the people that came to help but didn't really want to help and said just wanted to just say that they helped. Mm -hmm. That was, that's not very nice, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your time and for sharing with us your story and your perspective of volunteer tourism. It was really nice talking to you. Thank you. It was very nice talking to you. I like sharing it.